Hey there, Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey, and in this video we're going to be talking about development sequences. Now that's the process of acquiring, developing, and applying new skills in the game of hockey. Now just looking at the title itself, it's probably pretty obvious this is some really important stuff. In fact, if you really want to take your players and develop them to the best of their abilities, it's important that coaches understand what these sequences look like and how to implement them in their you know, day to day coaching. This video is also going to serve as a bit of an introduction to our upcoming coaching clinics that we're going to be running online starting up within the next couple of weeks. So if you're not on my email list, make sure you get on that. You can sign up for that at weisstechhockey.com. And uh, that'll just make sure that you're in the know as we begin to release you know, more details on how to get registered and when they start and all of that good stuff. So without further delay, let's go ahead and jump straight into the topic itself. To be able to utilize these um, development sequences, it's important to understand the three phases to skill development. We kind of just mentioned them, but those are acquirement, development, and application. What I want to do in this video is go through each of these in a little bit more detail and then give you some live footage of what, you know, what each of these phases will look like in action. So let's jump ahead straight into the acquirement phase. The acquirement phase is very important and this is one of the phases that is most often skipped. Coaches like to go straight to development and application um, and especially with this push for small area games, um, we tend to skip over the acquirement phase which is essential you know, if we really want to have a well-rounded, well-developed athlete that has a decent foundation from which to build the rest of the skills and the rest of his game. So um, the 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 basic objective with the acquirement phase is learning the raw fundamentals of the skill. Now that can be with any skill, right? Um, but the raw fundamentals of the, the basic skill. I usually like to do this by breaking it down into three essentials. So if we're talking like a crossover, for example, I'm going to use crossovers um, throughout the rest of this video as our example. But if you're going to break down the crossover into three essential things, okay, that doesn't mean that th those are the only things that go in, but these are the three key points that need to be in place and then afterwards later on you can fine tune the details. But the three essentials for me for the crossover would be, you know, obviously a deep knee bend. You got to be able to do it knee bend. If you're not if you're trying to do crossovers with your legs straight, you're going to be off balance, you're not going to be able to get any power, you're going to be slower. Um, it's just not going to work as well. So deep knee bend. Um, outside foot up and over, right? If you're kind of picturing a crossover in your mind, outside foot up and over, um, that's kind of the essential. I mean, you can't do a crossover without crossing over, right? So deep knee bend, get your outside foot up and over, and then the inside foot, as you're crossing over, the inside foot um, needs to have that toe snap. And that one oftentimes gets forgotten by, by players. So um, really you should hear two cuts, the outside foot cutting as it's lifting up and over, and then the inside foot toe snap afterwards. And we'll see some of this in the examples um, as we move forward. But that would be an example of three essentials. So you tell your players, hey, while you're doing these crossovers, I want you to focus on these three things. Keep your deep knee bend, get your outside foot up and over, and then snap your toe on the inside foot, right? And then as they're going through the drills, you're always going to come back to those three essentials and make sure that they're in place even as they move forward in the development sequence. We start with slow, controlled movements at first. This is not a race, not at this phase. This is where we want to acquire the skill. We want to iron out details. We want to make sure that this skill is looking the way we need to have it look before we really move on, before we add speed, before we add anything else to the skill. Okay, so we're going to segment this skill out. The focus here is acquiring the skill. and We need to go as slow as we need to go to be able to do that. Another goal here is proficiency with no pressure. So we're going to progress the players until they can do that crossover um, at a decent level of speed with no pressure on them. Now this isn't, this isn't the time where we're going to throw them into a game situation immediately. We're going to let them utilize, you know, get used to the skill to be able to do it proficiently both ways with no pressure on them. And then as that comes into play, then, you know, later down the road we're going to add a puck. So now let's see if they can maintain their three essentials that deep knee bend, that outside foot up and over, toe snap on the inside foot um, with a buck on their stick. Okay, so we begin to add elements as we go. But in the acquirement phase, it, it pretty much stops there. You know, once we've added the puck, that's the acquirement phase. Once they can do it proficiently with no pressure and a puck on their stick, 
then they're ready to move forward into the development phase. So before we jump straight into development, let me show you some examples of what the acquirement, what types of drills would work well in the acquirement phase for the crossover. So here's a great drill that you can do in the acquirement phase to introduce and acquire the forward crossover. This is three large circles. As you can see, we're doing one circle in each zone. And I'm gonna let you listen to it for a second. So as you can hear, there's two cuts with each stride. There's the outside foot coming up and over, and then the inside foot is getting that toe snap. So you can hear two ice cuts with each stride. With younger players or smaller players, you can do the same concept, but use the circles instead of the three zones. You know, with a six or a seven year old, three zones is gonna be so big that they won't be able to get their speed up enough to make it effective. So make the circles a little bit smaller. In this next variation, you can see this isn't necessarily as game applicable, but when you get the speed and the control up enough, then you get to the point where you can touch that inside hand down on the ice, similar to what the speed skating short track guys do. The idea of this is not foot speed, it's controlled power. So with the acquirement phase in place, now we can move forward into the development phase. And the objective of the development phase is getting the players used to using the raw skill at speed. Okay, so now it's not just a slow controlled crossover, now we're going full speed. Okay, we're gonna be starting to implement patterns that are gonna be used in the games. Okay, so using a crossover at speed that might be a situation where you're driving wide and cutting to the net through a defenseman. And you're gonna to have to use those quick, I call them five step crossovers, as you're driving that net with a puck on your stick, hopefully, and taking a shot. Okay, so um, another element of this development phase is combining the raw skill with other raw skills. So this could be raw skills, this could also be raw tactics, right? So it could be combining the crossover with puck control, this could be combining the crossover with puck control, with puck protection. You know, in the case that if we're driving wide and cutting to the net. Um, there also may, may be instances where, you know, we combine the crossover with, uh, you know, with inside edges. And I'll show you a drill that looks like that in a second. So this is where now we're combining the raw skill with other raw skills in game-like patterns, starting again with no pressure, but then, as we see in this next one, adding token pressure as the players become ready for it. Now this token pressure could be, it could be physical pressure, it could be, you know, the, the player has to drive wide through a, through a coach that's putting a little bit of pressure, maybe not as, maybe not game-like pressure yet, but a little bit of pressure um, as a player drives through so that there is a need for an actual puck protection tactic. Um, or it could be psychological pressure. This could be something like push-ups for losing a puck. And I do this quite often, you know, I'll tell my players, hey, look, we're doing a drill, I expect you to go full speed. There's nobody trying to take the puck off of you. You guys are all good enough players. You can all execute this skill. There is no reason for you to lose a puck in this drill. So if you lose a puck, you're gonna be doing five push-ups each time you lose it. Man, all of a sudden that can take, that can take what, what is becoming a sloppy practice and all of a sudden <laughs> dials these kids in because they don't wanna be doing push-ups. And I ask them, I say, hey, did you guys get that much better from, uh, you know, from 30 seconds ago when I threatened that to now? It's like, no, they, they didn't get that much better, not physically, they just focused. So a lot of times adding that psychological pressure can increase the focus and, um, you know, like it or not, there's gonna be psychological pressure in games too. So they gotta be able to handle physical and psychological pressure um, in this development phase. So that's kind of what we're looking at there. Um, and then lastly, we're gonna insist that the three essentials are still being done correctly. So as you put these players in game situations, are they maintaining that proper knee bend? Are they still getting the outside foot up and over properly? Are they still getting that toe snap so that their, their crossover is an explosive crossover? Or are things falling apart? You know, a lot of times kids will look smooth as can be in practice. Smooth as can be when there's no pressure. But then as soon as they try to increase speed or as soon as they try to add a puck on their stick, all of a sudden that smoothness goes out the window. Their knees get straight. They get choppy on their stride. Maybe, you know, a lot of times they start head bobbing, you know, head going up and down or sometimes head going side to side. They're form falls apart as different variables are added to the skill. So throughout, you know, that the acquirement phase is good to lay that groundwork. It lays that expectation of what's required to be able to perform that skill. But then it's the coach's responsibility through the development and application phases to insist that those three essentials are still being executed, even with other variables at play. Let's go ahead and show you an example of um, 
you know, utilizing the crossover at speed with some token pressure. So in the development phase, we do want to utilize these skills at speed. So here, instead of a slow, powerful crossover, you can see we're using the explosive crossover. This is the type of crossover you're going to see more often in game situations. Here we're doing half circles without the puck. And I like to keep it at three circles, especially for these explosive type drills, because by the time you get past that third, that third circle, you're already gassed and uh, you want to keep your players doing this at full speed as much as possible. So we started without the puck. Here you can see we're doing it with the puck, utilizing some puck protection tactics as well. And now we're going straight into the five-step crossovers. I love this drill. This really mimics drive skating on the ice in the game situation. And um, that was without the puck. Even when you don't have the puck, pretend like you have the puck on your stick and utilize that puck protection. So as you can see, two hands on the forehand, one hand on the backhand and get those explosive five-step crossovers. Now this is an inside edge drill combined with the five-step crossover, you know, that drive skate where you go through the cones, drive around the cone using those quick explosive crossovers, and then cut to the net for the shot. And inside edges through the cones, drive wide, explode, cut to the net for the shot. So now we've acquired the skill, we've gotten the players used to using the skill in different game-like patterns, but with minimal pressure, little to no pressure and now what we're going to do is apply the skill now in a game like situation with game like pressure okay so that's kind of what we're looking at we're looking to utilize the raw skills in game like situations with game like pressure some great ways of doing this are station drills you know i know i talk you know a lot of people that listen to me they they say man why are you so hard on small area games why don't you like small area games they're awesome i say they are awesome but there's a time and a place for them and when people try to use small area games to acquire skills, it's not nearly as effective as using them to apply skills that have already been acquired, but to apply those skills in game like pressure. So station drills, small area game drills, these are great for this phase. These are where you're really gonna put these types of drills to use and have that game like pattern with game like pressure. Uh, again, coming back to this continuous correction. We go back to the three essentials throughout the application drills. So it doesn't matter, you know, once you've laid that groundwork, you have to make sure that those three essentials are in place no matter what, no matter what the drill is. And the players should remember it. You know, you spent however however long working on that application, or sorry, working on that acquirement phase. Um, they should, those, those three essentials should be in their minds from you saying it over and over and over during the previous two phases. So make sure that that uh, continuous correction happens and that those three essentials are always being reinforced throughout the rest of these drills. What I want to do is show you a, a drill where this exact situation is, is going to be utilized. This is a one-on-one, -on -one, a give-and-go one-on-one drill. One of my favorite drills and it's very, very effective with implementing the crossovers in a game-like situation where the players are going to be able to use this, use this raw skill in a game-like situation with game-like pressure and it uh, works out really well. A give and go one on one drill sets up like this. We've got forwards in the corner with pucks, both corners, and then we've got our defensemen. The defenseman that will actually be participating in the drill is going to line up kind of about out here, about at the blue line, maybe about at the dots there, um, or just inside the dots. The defensemen that aren't involved in the drill are just going to wait kind of off to the side. There's going to be a lot more room here than what it looks like on this surface. But the drill itself goes like this. Uh, on the whistle, the forward steps out. Both sides go at the same time. Forward steps out and does a give and go pass with this defenseman. So it's gonna look something like this. The defenseman gets the puck, you know, touches it back kind of to the middle. It's more of an area pass there. The forward explodes forward, picks up the puck. He wants to pick that up at speed. And then after picking up the puck, the forward is gonna explode wide around the far cone. So he's gonna come up and around like this. Obviously we're using our crossovers. This is kind of where we use those uh, explosive five-step crossover style, you know, where it's, it's more of a drive skating style of crossover, right? Comes around the cone and then is going to attack the, uh, the far end uh, as a one-on-one. -on -one. After making that give and go pass, the defenseman's gonna peel out like this. He's gonna turn and skate forward with the forward um, but then as he comes around, he or she comes around this cone, I'm gonna make this arrow so, so it looks a little bit better here. But as he or she comes around the cone, then there's gonna be a pivot there. So then the defenseman will pivot 
and back up with the play. So it'll shape up something like this. Obviously, the other side is going at the same time, so this defenseman is not going to be in the way there. The only time that that's a possibility is if if somehow um, you know this play gets messed up, somebody falls down or whatever. But that shouldn't be an issue there um, because these guys are doing the exact same thing on the other side. There's a give and go out forwards exploding around that turn using the crossovers to pick up speed and then as they play the one-on-one -on -one, now it's a straight one-on-one -on -one. so the forward is going to be playing it you know based on the gap that that you're looking at from the defenseman um, but in uh, in all reality there's going to be another opportunity to use those crossovers if the forward uh, has the opportunity to drive wide and then cut to the net Again, that's going to be an opportunity for that drive skating to be put into a game situation, full speed, full pressure, um, and very, very game-like patterns in this drill. So uh, I love this drill. It's one of my favorite one-on-one -on -one drills. That's the give and go one-on-one. -on -one. Again, same thing's happening out of both corners and run the drill on the whistle. So now you've seen some examples of the acquirement phase, development phase, and application phase in action with the forward crossover. Obviously, you need to use this same sequence with all individual skills. All of the raw skills need to be brought forward, brought through this development sequence to really be able to lay that foundation, really be able to, to give the players a base from which you can build the rest of their game around, the rest of their game on. So as we move forward, I want to kind of share some final thoughts as you begin to implement these development sequences in your own coaching. First and foremost, we talked a lot about the three essentials. Those aren't the only things you need to look at. You know, those are the three basic key points with any given skill. But as the players become proficient, then it becomes time to fine tune the details, right? So um, yeah, there's more to a crossover stride than just those three details or just those three essentials. But if the players can't perform at least the raw essentials, you know, the, the knees bent, the basic crossover and the toe snap underneath, you're not going to have, you know, you're not going to be able to fine tune details if the basics aren't there. So establish the three essentials for any given skill. And then once the players are good enough, then you can start fine tuning details. And that's where the athletes really, um, you know, really begin to flourish because those details are what sets them apart from other players from the competition. Next, this isn't always going to be a linear progression model. Okay. Most of the time it's going to be, you know, three steps forward, two steps back. So don't be afraid to revisit stuff, right? So progress them forward so that they're introduced, you know, introduce them to the acquirement, introduce them to the development, introduce them to some drills where they're applying it, but it's going to look sloppy still. So then come back, redevelop, reapply, then see how it looks. Come back, redevelop, reapply, and see how it looks. Come back, reacquire, redevelop, reapply, right? It's going to be a continuous, continuous thing but the players, every time that you're applying, it's going to look better and better and better. So you're going to be coming through this cycle multiple, multiple times, um, you know, over the course of a season, but over the course of multiple years, which brings me, brings me kind of to the next point. Use this model from drill to drill, practice to practice, and season to season. This isn't, you know, this isn't like a quick fix. This isn't just a long-term fix. This is something that should be utilized um, within a single practice and also from practice to practice within a season. And if you have the opportunity, this is where the real power of these development processes come in is when you have the opportunity to work with the same group of players from season to season. So much can be done when you're, when you're not hitting the reset button at the end of each season. So depending on your organization, depending on the structure, <clears throat> if it's possible to maintain the same core group of kids from year to year, you're going to see so much more development by doing it that way. So use this model, drill to drill, practice, practice, season to season. If you found this drill useful, um, make sure again, make sure you get on our email list so that you get notified when the next video becomes available. And that video is going to be on uh, using on ice skill development in action. So it's going to be similar to this one, but just in more depth, more detail. And you're going to be able to see some of this skill development in action on the ice and it's going to be a lot of fun. So get on my email list. You can do that at weisstechhockey.com. And I'm excited to uh, be back with you in the next video.